All right, folks, welcome back to the shed. So continuing on with our engine stripped down series, what we're going to do is take a more in-depth look at the parts we went over in the intro video. So we're getting into the more nitty-gritty stuff. Now you may have noticed that the engine sitting in front of me is silver, which means it's obviously not the black engine we looked at in the first video. However, this engine is pretty much the same as the other one with some minor differences. So here we have a dual exhaust port, we have a manual rev counter and the other difference is we don't have a counterbalance shaft and apart from that everything else from this can be transferred to the other one knowledge wise. So in this video we're going to take a more in-depth look at the cylinder head and the block and from here we'll refer to them as the head and the block. So let's get started. Alright, so we begin by removing the rocker cover. Rocker cover off, we can see the rocker cover seal. Okay, moving in for a closer look. We can see here at the top of the head is the rocker arms which are fixed to this cradle. And the rocker arm, so rocker cover, if it was a cam shaft then cam cover but we use the terms interchangeably. Undoing these three bolts will allow us to lift out the rocker assembly. Undoing these bolts, undoing these bolts will allow us to lift out the rocker assembly. As we lift the assembly clear, we can see on the inside of the arm there is a cup where the push rods rest and on the outside of the arm is the part that pushes down on the top of the valve. On this design we can see that the valve adjustment valve adjustment is on the outside of the arm. On the more prestigious arms we have a roller bearing and the valve adjustment is on the inside. The roller type is quieter and you get less wear. Now I say valve adjustment in quotation marks because even though that's what we call it we don't actually adjust the valves what we do is adjust the gap between the top of the valve and the arm or the cam lobe you will hear people saying adjust the valves adjust the tappets or fix the valve lash and these all affect the same adjustment the opening here is an oil feed that leads up to the rocker cover and going back to the rocker cover we see here oil comes in here and it then travels and sprays out of these holes down onto the rocker assembly. We can see one of the push rods sticking out here uh, there should be Another one at this side, but accidentally dropped it to into the inside of the engine. These are fixed lens, but we can buy adjustable push rods, but it's not really worth the expense. Now, can I get this to focus? See right there? CG125152. And that's because, to the best of my knowledge, this is a clone of an early Honda CG engine. So, we'll put aside, we have here the top of the valve stem, and around the stem is the valve springs. Valve springs are balanced to keep the valves tight against the valve seats, but not so strong that the rocker can't push the valve open. For better performance, we can fit beehive springs or conical springs which can help reduce valve float. Valve float is where the valves close but 
they bounce off the seat before they sit tight. Moving on, if we remove these four bolts on the inside, we can move the head from the block. Now, if you trim an engine down, you may have a little trouble removing the head. You should not wedge anything between the head and the block, as you may cause irreparable damage. The best thing to do is get yourself a rubber or a wooden mallet and give it a few wax to shock it loose. After you've remembered to remove all the bolts. <sighs> Dumbass. Whew. Once the head breaks free, we can lift it clear of the block. And we'll set that aside for the time being, so we can take a closer look at the top of the block. Oh, there it is. So, this is our head gasket. Now, once we start rebuilding, this most definitely must be replaced. We can easily see the all-important piston and our oil delivery comes up through here and these cutouts is where the push rods pass through the block they go all the way through and out the top of the head looking back at the top of the piston we can see some carbon build up here and that's totally normal though if it's quite bad we can Assume our air fuel mixture is wrong or we don't have a proper spark. You can see there is indents in this piston. And don't panic if you see these because they're supposed to be there. They match the location of the valves and it allows the valves to remain open just a smidgen longer than would be without the indents. Moving along we can see two different types of metal here. The engine block is cast and aluminium which is bored out to fit a machine cylinder sleeve that is made from steel and the reason for the steel sleeve is that it offers a nice hard wearing surface for our combustion chamber. Depending on the sleeve we can have these reboard to fit an oversized piston. Okay going back to the head we're going to do the dodgy we'll remove the valves without the proper tools Hashtag real mechanic. Yeah, uh, this is a dodgy part. So we turn out the retaining collars, which are these small bits here. Oop. The washer. We have the outside spring. And then we have the inside spring. And this is the exhaust side. So what we'll do is write X on our sheet here just to keep track. Right, now our valves have, valve springs have been removed. We can now remove the valves. 
the valves out, we can have a closer look. So we have the valve tip, and we have the retaining groove, then we have the valve stem, this is called the fillet, then we have the seat face, and then the combustion face. It's important that we protect the, the seat face from damage. If the seat face gets damaged then we won't get a proper seal on the combustion chamber. So this is the intake and our exhaust. Our exhaust is uh, actually smaller than our intake. I'll put that aside. Right, looking back over the head we can easily see the intake and exhaust ports on the intake side it's straightforward on the exhaust side we have this blanking plate and there is a path from here to the inside of the exhaust and this allows gases to travel through the port and up to the exhaust gas free circulation or EGR for short and back into the air intake system. This actually helps reduce peak in cylinder temperature which in turn helps reduce nitrogen oxide not to be confused with nitrous oxide. Now there is a debate that doing an EGR delete benefits performance so you can see why people choose to remove it. On a 125 however the gains are debatable. Turning the head over, we can see the combustion chamber, and again, we see some carbon buildup, which is normal. However, a heavy buildup, as before, can be a sign of problems. And flexocarbon can get in between the valve seat faces, meaning they won't create a gas tight seal, reducing compression, causing the engine to run bad. And here we can see the we can see the spark plug electrode poking through. Spark plugs are all different sizes, so make sure that you match your plug or replace it with a suitable equivalent plug. So maintenance and issues on the block. There is no maintenance, so maintenance free. Common issues, however, include worn piston rings blown head gasket and burned out piston crowns. On the head side of maintenance we have the valve adjustment and the spark plug. Valve should be done every few thousand miles. Uh, believe it or not the book from my ranger says 1,000 kilometres, 4,000 kilometres, 8,000 kilometres, and then 12,000 kilometres. However, I would recommend you do them every 2,000 miles, just to save you a bit of headache. Now, the spark plug should be checked, cleaned and adjusted with your regular service, if it's not replaced. So, issues with the head can include... Badly adjusted valves, resulting in them not opening or closing fully. Burned and pitted valves, which is more common in the exhaust side. Uh, burned or suited spark plug, and the spark plug can also be wrongly gapped. Now, these are what I would say are common issues, but you can have other issues, so you aren't just limited to the ones I've mentioned. Right, right, that's us for this video. We've took a closer look at the engine cylinder head and the engine block, and I hope that I've been able to teach and impart a lot of knowledge to you guys. In the next video, we'll take a look at the stator and the clutch. So, keep an eye out for that. If you feel I've missed something, or you want to add a little bit more knowledge, then please leave a comment below. 
If you do like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to catch the rest of my videos, then please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss future videos in the series. And if you can, give the video a wee share. You may know somebody else out there that would benefit from learning some of this stuff. Anyway guys, until next time, I'll catch you later.